Hello everyone, these are Clara, Juan Pedro, and Noelia. We are currently taking second language acquisition at the National University of La Pampa. In this video, we will talk about the complexity of learning propositions in a second language. In this case, Spanish learners of English. We first study Gail Stam's research article Thinking for Speaking about Motion, L1 and L2 Speech and Gesture. Her paper functions as a starting point for our analysis. In our video, we will explore the results of Stam's research as well as the difficulties of learning and teaching motion in English. Finally, we will reflect on how to create awareness on this matter in the classroom. To begin with, thinking for speaking refers to the thinking that occurs online or that parallels the process of speaking. When acquiring our L1, we learn a particular way of thinking for speaking. We need to say that Spanish is a verb-framed language and English a satellite-framed one. What does it mean? It means that while Spanish speakers encode directionality on the verb, English speakers do so on a satellite, which might be either an adverb or a preposition. So, in order to have a true sense of proficiency in L2 learners, it is necessary to look at their gestures and speech. Some work with four different groups native Spanish speakers, native English speakers, Spanish learners of English at an intermediate level, and Spanish learners at an advanced level of English. She showed them an extract from Sylvester and Tweety and then asked them to narrate what they had seen. She aimed at confirming her hypothesis about the way English and Spanish encode motion events. It's important to remember that a motion event is the movement of some entity through space and it includes Motion, the action itself A figure, that is to say the moving object Ground, which refers to the reference object Path, which involves the direction of the motion And manner, which expresses the way the action is performed Bearing all this information in mind, Stam carried out her research in which she was able to confirm her initial ideas. So, English is a satellite-framed language as it encodes directionality on a satellite, adverb or preposition. Motion and manner are indicated by the verb, and path is indicated by a satellite, such as a particle or an adverb. For example, if we say, she rushed into the classroom, the pronoun and subject, she, would be the moving object. The verb rushed would indicate motion and manner, and into the classroom would indicate the path. By the way, thank you, Sonia, for your valuable example. On the other hand, Spanish is a verb from language, as it encodes that actionality on the verb. Motion and path are indicated by the verb as well. If there is manner, it is indicated by an adjunct, usually a gerund, ando endo, or a phrase with como. Sonia entró al aula corriendo como un rayo. In this case, Sonia would be the moving object. Entró would indicate motion and path, and the gerund corriendo and the phrase como un rayo would indicate manner. So Gail Stein's findings show the difference between English and Spanish as regards the way speakers encode experience. The complexity of English resides in the fact that English speakers accumulate path components. An example taken from the article shows this accumulation of path components out of our particles and prepositions and it rolls down the drain boat, across the street, and into the bowling alley. 
Another major complexity English poses to Spanish learners of English is the number of prepositions the language has. Spanish counts with only around 30 prepositions, while English counts with over 100. The number and the accumulation of prepositional elements makes it really hard for a Spanish speaker to acquire all of them. This is why we focus our attention on the learning and teaching of prepositions. We, as students and future teachers of English, are used to learning and being taught prepositions in a decontextualized way, which required us to use our declarative memory rather than our procedural one. And this adds another level of complexity, since native speakers naturally learn prepositions through the interaction of their bodies and the space surrounding them. They don't just sit down and learn them. They pick them up on the way each of them is used from the context. To make matters worse, what doesn't exist in Spanish, it is even more difficult to learn and represent in English. We have one-to-one -one correspondence in English and Spanish, in very few cases, so we can only translate some prepositions. As a consequence, we need to bear in mind that we have to teach prepositions in the way native speakers learn them. They do so in context. For example, at home when your mom says, it's cold, go put on your jacket, or after dinner, go get that off the table, or push your chair in, This shows that through imperative structures or commands, children pick up the language easily in a contextualized environment. So as future teachers, we can imitate and teach our students in that way because it is the natural way to learn. How can we achieve this? We now propose some activities to apply in the classroom making use of TPR, Total Physical Response. One way of helping our students to learn prepositions in a natural way is to ask them to draw themselves using a reference object, a book, a notebook, and then to position themselves in space through imperatives. For example, we can tell them, put yourself next to the notebook, stand next to the pencil case, put yourself behind the table, because this is the way they can see people interacting with space and the objects surrounding them, picking it up naturally without much thinking. As an alternative for learning locations, we could print a map of Santa Rosa and again, through questions, ask them to move around the city using a real life context. For example, can you tell me where the university is in relation to the main square? Or as an imperative, tell me where the gas station is in relation to the main square. As a third option to teach kids prepositions, we could also use video songs, books, and games such as Simon Says and memory games so that they learn through experience. Our final reflection is that we need to change the way we learn and teach English prepositions, considering all the difficulties we have as second language learners and teachers. The fact that Spanish is a verb-framed language and English a satellite-framed one. The English accumulation of path components and the wide range of English prepositions and the lack of clear translations to all of them. And the fact that we are used to teaching and learning prepositions by heart without a logical and experiential understanding of the relationship between body and space. It is high time for us to change our traditional teaching methodologies and lead our lessons towards embodied cognition.